I titled this talk, So You Want to Be a Developer, but maybe I should test an assumption. Is there anyone out there who actually would like to pursue a career in coding? A few tentative hands. Hopefully I don't scare you off. So, my name is Graham. Um, I'm a programmer. I also run training courses, and that includes um, being involved in Catalyst Open Source Academy, which is a, a thing we run over the summer for, for secondary school students, and uh, I know some of you have been on that. Um, I am active in the open source world, both as a developer and also um, in the community, running community events. Uh, I'm also an old white guy, and I'm delighted <laughs> that that puts me in the minority today, so <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I've been programming professionally for about 25 years, which is probably longer than many of you have been alive. Um, so this talk is about why I do what I do, why I still love my job after all this time, and share some things I've learned along the way that hopefully will be of use to you as you pursue your careers. First point, it's not about the code. It's actually about solving problems. So, listening to what people are trying to do, thinking about how you could help them, designing a solution, and then finally getting into a bit of coding at the end, and then hopefully closing the loop and confirming that the thing you built actually does solve the problem that, that they had in the first place. And to many of the people that you're helping, your tech skills will seem like magical superpowers. They don't necessarily understand what you do or how you do it, because if they did, they do it themselves. So that's why they need you. Um, but it's a very special feeling when you take something that you've slaved over for, for weeks or months and you hand it over and you recognise that, that spark of recognition in their eyes, the meaning of what this thing you've created can do for them. And, and it's that that keeps me going after all these years. Another important point is every IT project is a team effort. Um, I don't know how much opportunity you get for, for working in teams um, here at uni. Um, it sounded earlier on like not enough, but in the business world you will be working in a team. You'll be part of a team, you'll be supported by the team. The team will succeed or fail as a whole. It's not about individuals competing. So there's a social aspect to the coding that you will be interacting with other people in the team and other people outside of the team. Um, so you'll be expected to speak effectively and to write effectively, to tell people what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're planning, what you're having trouble with. And these are core skills. Don't let anyone tell you that they're soft skills. These are core skills. If you already do them well, then that gives you a little bit of an advantage over the um, stereotypical introverted coder who just wants to deal with computers and, and not deal with people. If you are that stereotypical introverted coder, then you're going to have challenges um, moving into the workplace. But the great thing is that these core skills, like tech skills, are things that you can build and learn and develop through practice and through asking for help. So they're super important. When you sign up for a career in, in IT, you're signing up for lifelong learning. The only thing you can rely on is that everything changes all the time. Technology comes and goes as fashions change. Old technologies come back and get reused in different ways. So you will be expected to learn on the job. You'll probably receive some training, but you will be expected to train yourself. And that will involve things like reading documentation, 
um, searching for answers online, um, working through tutorials, using Stack Overflow. Things change so fast, it's not possible to work and, and function in this role without doing those things. So if you find yourself thinking, I shouldn't have to look this up, I should know this, then don't worry about it, everyone does it. You'll also be expected to share your knowledge. So don't imagine you have to be a, a domain expert in something to help someone else. If you know something that a teammate needs to know, talk to them. It's as simple as that. And that communication, that helping them out, helps you cement your tech knowledge and also build your communication skills. So your career will be a long and winding road. When you get to the end of it, you will have a wealth of experience. But what is experience and how do you get it? I love the saying, there's more than a grain of truth in it. The wisdom to avoid mistakes comes from experience. Experience comes from making mistakes. I'm not saying that you need to go out and make a ton of mistakes. That will happen naturally. <laughs> uh, what I am saying is that you shouldn't avoid doing something just out of fear that it might be a mistake. Probably will. Um, no. As, as you move through your career, inevitably there will come a point where, despite all your best efforts, that thing that you did turned out to be a poor choice. But you will have learned from that experience. Next time you need to make a choice that's in some way related, you can think back on that time and work out how you could have done things differently. But a critical part of this is that you have to own your mistakes. Don't try and cover them up. Don't try and hide your mistakes. You need to talk with your teammates about what you were thinking, what you thought was going to happen, where you thought things started to go wrong. Those sorts of communications help build the team, help build trust, um, they'll help you develop the confidence that you're not going to be crucified for making a mistake again in the future. And other people who are watching that happen, similarly, will be taking that on board and, and building the team. I mentioned earlier um, magical superpowers, and some of you might not be feeling like you have magical superpowers. Some of you might start a new job and look, look around at your colleagues and think, do I even belong here? Um, if you do feel that way, it's a thing. It's not just you. Um, it happens to a lot of people, including, surprisingly, people with many years of experience um, and a long list of accomplishments under their belts. So if you're experiencing this, you can search online and you can uh, find out about imposter syndrome. It's, it's something that's been studied uh, extensively. There's some good resources online to help you deal with it. Um, there's this thing called the imposter cycle. If you read up about that, you can start to recognise when you're doing things that reinforce each other in a negative way. So things like not wanting to hand something over because it's not perfect yet. When nothing anybody does is perfect. And, and thinking because perhaps the thing you're doing or producing isn't as good as what you perceive your workmates are doing, perhaps drawing back from them a bit. When what you need to be doing is you need to be, you need the social interaction to build your confidence. So you need to not draw back but, but move forward into the team. And this one, last one there, the, the discounting positive feedback. If someone says to you, you did a really good job on that thing, your natural reaction might be to say, oh, I got lucky, or so-and-so did all the hard work. But the reality is, if somebody took the time and effort to say to you, you did a good job on that thing, they probably actually think you did a good job. So, own it. This one is not based on any sort of um, academic rigour or scholarly studies. From my observation, Programmers 
fall into two broad groups. The one on the left I call type F. When they're not at work coding, they're at home coding. <laughs> For fun. So they're, they're learning new languages, new technologies and tools. One on the right is a type J. So they do it for a job. At the end of the day, when the job's done, the older ones will be heading home to their families, the younger ones will be heading out with their mates. So maybe playing sports, maybe playing in a band, going to see a band or a show, going out, living their lives. Now, it might not surprise anyone to know that I am a type F. But what I do have to say is the industry has enough type Fs. You don't have to be that person to succeed in the industry. And in fact, type J is a much healthier way to live your life. <laughs> and it builds a, a diversity of experience and um, just generally builds a better person that your company will benefit from. So don't be that type F guy. However, I mentioned lifelong learning. When you start out your career, you might find that you want to do a bit of the type F stuff. You might want to, on your own time, do a side project with some technology to get to know it better. Um, but think of that as doing it for yourself, building your confidence, doing it for you, not because your employer expects or demands it. Uh, and this final bit here, um, I mentioned earlier that those communication skills. Now there's a dark side to that, that that recently was brought to my attention through a talk by this lady, Tanya Riley, who's a um, technologist um, and speaker and writer. And you should write this down so you can find it later. Um, she did this talk about, in a team, when there's work that needs to be done that's of a people, a people skills nature, or a process type thing, like, like um, a reporting function, what you find is that the other team members, particularly the men, will be inclined to step back and let you do it if you have demonstrated that you have those skills. And if you do have those skills, and if you enjoy it, and importantly, if you're getting recognised for it, then by all means, do it. And that might be a good path into being a project manager or a manager. But if your goal is a technical career, if you want to be a coder, don't get drawn into doing that stuff just because your colleagues do it poorly. Recognise that you're being called on unfairly and um, make sure you don't fall into that trap. So this talk that she put together, the slides and your speaker notes are online. Um, and there's some great stories in there. And yes, she is talking as a woman to other women, but I think it's important for men to read it too, to recognise in themselves what they might be doing um, and, and consider the, the fairness or otherwise. Uh, so that was uh, the points I had to make. The final one there, be curious. I think it's super important um, as a technologist to drill down into one or two things to understand how they really work. Um, so that will serve you well, curiosity. That's it from me. Any questions? Yes. Yes. That's an excellent question. <laughs> so one of the things I, I did for many years was run um, a user group uh, about, around the Perl programming language. Um, I've recently wound that up, and the reason is because it was too siloed and, and focused. So although we covered a range of things at, at those meetings, people who weren't Perl people wouldn't consider coming along to that meeting. So what I've started instead is this thing called the Wellington Open Source Show and Tell. And it's, it's for cross-pollinating all the different user groups. Um, so we 
aim to get talks about a broad range of subjects, which, to be honest, happens in all those other groups. It's just that they have a name that puts them in a pigeonhole. So um, I have these uh, awesome laptop stickers, so if you, if you want to strike up conversation with me afterwards, then come and ask for one of those. Um, and come along to our meeting. Wasac.nz is our website. Um, look it up. Anyone else? Yes. Um, along the bullet point of being curious, would you recommend for people who are going to COVID these days to be a specialist or a generalist? I definitely, personally, got a, a lot of mileage out of specialising in being a generalist. <laughs> so, there, there is definitely a place for specialists, but people who understand the big picture and understand how to integrate those things together, I think are in a safer place. So if you're a specialist in a technology that, that dies, then that's not a good place to be in. Like I myself, my training was how to fix computers. And people don't do that anymore. It's not, it's not even a thing. 